the first letter you wrote to them was okay. That was just kind of a greetings and a kind of a funny letter, which is fine. But now you've got to uh, be a lot more pinpoint accurate about what you, you have to ask them a direct question. You can't be vague. If you're vague, they'll yeah. just uh, ignore you. And I would too, because like I said, if you just say, is uh, income tax, you know, uh, what was that on Canada? Well, it's voluntary on Canada. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Like, first of all, like, what in the world does voluntary mean? And then Canada, what in the world does Canada mean? Very vague. Yeah. You know, so they'll say, is income tax voluntary? And that they could say, I mean, that's an easy enough question to say, yes, everything's voluntary. But it's funny, it's it's voluntary to a man, but it's not voluntary to an employee. You see what I'm saying? A man yep. can volunteer, but an employee has, can't. You know, it's just like they say to people all the time, like a cop. A cop is bound by certain rules and he's, you know, so certain structures and he's, you know, confined to. He, you know, he's defined within a certain parameter and he has to live within that parameter. And just like an employee has to. But a man, he's he's undefinable. It's just like God. God is undefinable. God, you know, man's not bound by a piece of paper. Man can't just be defined, you know, in some code section of a book, you know, in uh, two, three uh, chapters. That's ridiculous. The big thing, like I said, is the, the, you just got to get the the mental part down. Just when anybody starts uh, talking to you, you, know, you just got to get the mental part down. You got to stop answering their questions. You know what I'm saying? It's like they don't deserve an answer because they're not acting like in a capacity that of a man. You know, they're not talking to man to man. So if you're not willing to talk to me man to man, uh, I'm wasting my time here. And that's the way I tell them all the time. You know, I hear, even when they took my kid when I first met the women in social services, I said, are you here in an official state, you know, like government capacity? Are you here, uh, you know, acting through an agency? And they were like, yes. I said, well, I have absolutely nothing to say to you then. She goes, what's funny is two women came in and talked to us first. They were uh, Baptists, like Southern Baptists, and they were trying to tell us how there were services to help us uh, with a Downs child and stuff like that, and uh, if we needed uh, their help, to give them a holler. So we're like, oh, that's, that's wonderful, that's great. Two more women came in, and it started to sound like uh, they were trying to get bossy, you know? Like, I said, wait a second, are you from... Uh, are you from like a like a, some organization like Southern Baptist or something like that? And they're like, no. They said we're here from the DHR. And they said is the DHR some sort of a, a government run uh, agency? They said are you some sort of uh, acting as an agent for you know a state government, an agency for a state government? Or and they're like, yes. I said then we have absolutely nothing to say to you folks. And they're like, well, you need to talk to us. I said, <laughs> I need nothing. You know, and certainly I don't need anything from the state. I certainly don't need anything from you two lovely ladies. I said I need absolutely nothing from you people. Well, I need you all come knocking on the door. Did you ever get any of them to talk to you as a man to woman? No, no. That's why I would never talk to them. No, I would would never talk to them. Like I said, once they they said they're always going to talk to me, you know, as a social worker, I said, you know, talk to me as a stop sign, talk to me as a tree, talk to me as a potted plant then, because you got nothing, I got nothing to say to you, because I can't hear you, I can't see you, I can't listen to you. You know, you don't exist in my world. You know, there's absolutely nothing I need from you people. And like I said, it's funny. Under the Social Security Act, and under then there's something else called this, the Medicaid Act and, uh, in the United States here. And it clearly says in uh, section like 465 and 645, uh, 648 in the uh, Medicaid and Social Security Act, I got the exact codes. It said the government cannot solicit services. A man or a woman has to knock on like the social services or Medicaid door. Social services... And Medicaid people can't come asking you, would you like our help? I mean, I got the whole long code, you know, in my computer. I'm going to take me two seconds to find it. Oh, they get 685 and 485. That's right. One's Medicaid, one's Social Security. But once I read that kind of stuff, you know, years ago, it's, it's, it's starting to make a lot more sense to me. They can't come to you and say to you, would you like assistance? They can't do that. They, It's like being an insurance salesman. They can't bother you with ridiculous nonsense. Oh, we got a great product. Okay, what's your product? It's called foster care, and we'll take care of your kid forever. Or you know, it's called euthanasia, and since he's disabled and permanently disabled, we'll kill him for you. It's like, no, that, that, thanks anyway. That's like a lovely offer, but no. See, they can't. They can't even solicit. They can't. They can't solicit me. It, it says it right there in their code, which is fantastic. So when they come up and talk to me, it's like, you know, you trying to solicit me? You trying to talk to me? You trying to initiate a conversation with me? Yeah, well. You know, that's, not only is that uh, unlawful, it's illegal. 
You can't. If you're here from a government entity, government agency, you can't initiate contact, you know. So it's that simple. I tell them, look, I'm a man, and I'm willing to talk to you man to man. You know, if you want to talk to me like these two women who just came in here and left, I'll talk to you. I got to talk to those two women. I said, but if you're here in official government capacity and you think that you're going to, like, record all this nonsense, I mean, they didn't have, like, a tape recorder. But it's like, if you think you're going to fill out some sort of report about this encounter, I said, you can forget about it. I said, I'm not going to say anything to you people. And then they were trying to say, well, you have to sign this. You have to do this. If you don't, you'll never see your kid again. It's like, you know, that, that's just communicating a threat. You know, so that's just extortion. So what are you going to do? Well, break my legs next? I said, look, I grew up in New York. My sister married a Gambino. I said, I, I know this fucking routine. You're trying to muscle me. I said, I understand what you're doing. I'm trying to do a shakedown. You're trying to scare me, intimidate me. I said, I'm sorry. It ain't going to work. I come from New York, and there's a lot scarier people than you two lovely ladies that threaten me. I said, so, uh, you know, you're going to have to take it somewhere else because I'm not fucking scared of you. And if that property doesn't lie where I live that the night, tonight, I said, I'll own this state by the time I'm done with you people. Don't, don't trespass on my property. And that's what I was telling you about your uh, your time. You know, you have to explain to them. They're going to come after you, and they're going to say you're an employee for all these years. And they're going to say an employee has a certain duty and obligation and responsibility to pay 40% of his retirement. And you're going to have to get that mental attitude in your head. It's like, well, it was nice to be called an employee for all those years, but now I don't wish to be called, and I don't wish you to call me that as well. You know, you got to get that mental attitude going that you're a man and that you don't wish to be addressed by that anymore. No more title. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't want to accept the title. It's too costly. It's like there's no benefit. And you know, can you please stop referring to me as that? And, and again, are you talking to me as a man or a woman? Like I said, if you ever have to go to court, that's the whole trick. You got to get two courts going. They're going to try to get their court going, and you're going to get your court going. But with something like that, I bet you they're not going to initiate any court proceedings. You're going to be the one who's going to have to initiate it. You know, they they couldn't care less. You know, they'll just they'll just let your money sit in limbo. Yep. They're not going to care. They're just going to let it sit there. You know, they're not going to pursue you. You're going to have to pursue them. So you're going to have to just start asking them some simple questions. Because they're going to want you to give a percentage to your uh, a percentage of your uh, retirement to the CRA. Yeah, big percentage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it is the CRA. Okay. Yep, so you're gonna have to, yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to start talking to the CRA. Just start, you know. And what's funny is, uh, what, what I wonder what that division is. You're gonna have to find out, I guess, what that division is called. You know, that takes over the, uh, uh, like the retirement that does retirement benefits. You're gonna have to find out what that, you know, division is called. At, at my work? No, you're gonna have to find out what that, the division of CRA is called. You know, you're gonna have to find have to find out who. You know, who is in charge of whatever, you know, like I said, uh, they don't do that here in the United States. So you're going to have to start, you know, initiating contact with somebody in the CRA and say, hey, look, you know, when I when I go to, you know, retire and they're going to take 40% of my pension, you know, like, what, yeah, what the vision of, uh, well, at first you're going to, see, at first you, you you can't say property to them at first because you, they're going to realize you're setting them up. And see, this is what I'm saying. This is a game. This is a thinking man's game. And, uh, like I said, you you, you got to do it, like I say to people, it, it's like you make it, you're trying to catch a mouse or any kind of animal. You're trying to catch this animal. You know, it's just a crazy freaking animal. And uh, you got to build a trap, and you got to bait it, and you got to reel them in there slowly. If you just say to them in the very first letter, what makes you think you're going to take my property when I retire? They're going to say, holy shit, he's a tax protester. He's a tax nut. He's one of these free men people. Oh, my God. We'll, we'll, we'll send the goon squad after him. They're not, they're not going to communicate with you. They're just going to they're just going to clob you. And, you know, like I said that the other day when um, we were driving, and I said this poor guy in Colorado went totally ballistic when I said to him, he says, like I said, he was talking on the Gus's show or somebody else's show. He says, Carl always says, uh, don't talk in court. And then he says, Carl, the lady on says, uh, talk in court. So which way is Carl going with this? I said, it all depends. Whose court is it? Is it my, you know, then I called up, uh, I took the phone over from Gus, and I just laid into this guy. If you know me and my style and my stuff so well, finish that line. When should you talk in court? He said, well, you said never. I said, okay, really? How about I finish the passage for you? And then I finished the passage for him. I said, now, when do you talk in court? And I go back and listen to the shows, and I'll see you say, this is when you do, this is when you don't. And it's the same thing. There's sometimes when you tell the CRA it's property, and sometimes you tell them, you know, my retirement benefits. 
you have to reel them in slowly. And this is what I'm saying. This is a thinking man's game. And like I said, you know, just like Gus or whatever, like Gus said, you know, he just did it the same job for 30 years, the same, like, basic stuff every day. So he didn't have to think. He just had to do. It became so natural. It became so simple to him that, you know, he, he was an expert at it. You know, so somebody like me, if I tried to do what Gus did for 30 years, just tank sheetrock, I'm sure it would take me uh, quite a while to figure out how to get it up there just as quickly, fast, and as easily as Gus could do it in a couple of minutes because he's great at it. You know, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to think anymore. It just comes natural. The movements come natural. And that's what's going on with you. You have to think. When do you call it property? When do you don't call it property? Of course, I guess I said, when you and I were driving the other day, you know, I said to you, you know, it's your property. you got to start getting on the sand. Your retirement package for your retirement benefits are your property. And nobody else on planet Earth can claim them or enjoy them. But obviously, CRA is going to try to claim them, and CRA is going to try to enjoy it because it's considered a retirement package. It's not considered property. So like I said, you're going to have to slowly reel them in, slowly get them on the hook. You're going to have to say to them, oh, you know, I'm, I'm planning on retiring soon, and um, I want to get in touch with uh, the division that uh, takes 40% of uh, the retirement benefits. You know, can you can you steer me towards that department? Something simple like that. Yep. You're going to have to slowly reel them in, slowly go at them, you know, because, uh, like I said, you're going to scare them off. You start doing all this shit that it's your property. Like I say to people all the time, it's going to say, oh, they're going to put you in a wackadoo uh, tax protest division. Oh, they're going to get put you on a special list. Oh, it's like, oh, another one of them. Here we go. Another wackadoo. So, uh, because like I said, it's, I feel bad for those people, you know, like say like a John Fall kind of guy, because he masters the, you know, CRA or the IRS code better than anybody at the IRS can do. You know, better than anybody the CRA can do. He masters that code, and it goes absolutely nowhere, you know. So, uh, because he tries to say, well, look, in your code, it clearly says this. And they're like, mm, did you write that code, John? No. Did, who are you to interpret that code, John? Are you part of our code division? No. And what makes you think that you're reading that co code book in the correct manner? What makes you think? Are you, are you, do we see anywhere on file that you're an IRS agent? Well, no. Did you go to school for this? Well, no. You got a certification or accreditation? No. So then your opinion is absolutely worthless. Zero. Nothing. Not it's it's worse it's less than worthless. You know what? You're actually wasting our effing time. You're actually costing us money. And you're actually really pissing us off. So would you you know, you you, you better stop. You know, if you don't stop, we're gonna hold you in contempt of court. You go on and on and on with this crazy uh well uh, this is what the IRS code says. Oh really? You open your mouth one more time about an IRS code and we're gonna hold you in contempt of court. And they're like, well, you guys are like, well, 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 wait, wait a second, that's what we're here about. We're here about my, uh, to talk about that. No, 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 we're not here to talk about that. You're a defendant. You sit there and take an ass whooping. The defendant just, he doesn't prosecute, he doesn't come forward. He just curls up in the ball and takes a beating. All he does is try to block the punches. He doesn't go on the attack. So when you don't have your court going at the same time, they got their court going. You just sit there and take a good ass whooping and hope that you survive. You hope they don't put you back far enough, like in football, like over your end zone. But you don't score. You know, you don't go forward. You know, so it's kind of funny how uh, people don't understand that. Like I said, when I was over in Bali and then uh, over in England, how we had to get our own court going. It was like the Crown Prosecutor said, and it was all over. He says, how in God's name did I lose in Crown Court? He's like, how did that happen? Like, it's never happened in the history of England. How did that happen? I said, the judge warned your buddy a month ago that I was going to be opening up my court and you guys didn't want to go out in the hallway and talk to me. The judge is trying to warn you. You better go talk to this man because he's going to have his court going the same time you guys got yours. And they thought it was a joke. They thought it was a total joke. So that's what I'm saying. you got to slowly, you know, talk to these people and get them just to talk to you, to open up to you, to get you to tell them, you know, names. You just got to start communicating with them and getting their names. Once you start getting their names, you'll have something. You'll be able to uh, call them out later on. But until you get their names, you certainly don't ever use the word property because it's hard enough to uh, get their names to begin with. I was listening to a 
public radio. So we have, you know, we had 700 miles to drive the other day. So uh, believe me, I listened to plenty of uh, NPR. And somebody from the IRS came on, and they said uh, they're barely doing any more um, audits and not really uh, going over the IRS forms like they used to. They, like I said, like my mom, you know, she's in her 70s now, and all the older people are retiring from the IRS, and uh, they, they just don't have the staff anymore that's competent to do uh, tax audits. So the whole tax audit division of the IRS is falling apart. So they said uh, it's almost impossible to get a name of a worker anymore because there's so few that actually do it. And they say every time you call up on the phone now, you're basically going to get a different worker. You're not going to get the same person who's doing your case from beginning to end. So it's pretty funny hearing uh, this lady coming on and, and talking about the IRS like that because she used to work for the IRS and then some man from Connecticut came on and he says, I still work for the IRS and she's telling the truth. He's like saying the auditing division is, is totally disintegrating. And, uh, you know, this, the lady was basically saying, you know what, you, you guys could possibly basically get away with anything you want right now because there's nobody really paying attention. There's really nobody there anymore. Who knows what to look for? So uh, she said, you know, I'm not telling people to go out and, you know, do something illegal. She's saying, but uh, honestly, they're, they're falling apart over there. They're very few competent people who are still employed. Because like a month, it's seasonal work, so it's, you could say it's part-time. I don't think she ever made over uh, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year working for the IRS ever. And so it's pitiful. And uh, like the guy at uh, Connecticut said, uh, he said he was in the Navy, I forgot, for 25, 27 years. He says, and the IRS employees are just as dedicated as anybody that he ever worked with at the Navy. And he says, but they work for peanuts. And he says, you know, just like the guys at the Navy. He says, but they're really dedicated into doing their jobs correctly. He says, they're good people there. He says, but uh, they're totally overwhelmed. They're totally, over, you know, working. You know, he says, it's just total chaos down here. So, like I said, if you want to get a name, you better believe. You better be nice. Because if you're not nice and sweet and charming and you don't write like that happy letter that you did the first time, that was a wonderful happy letter, and that's great. You write something like, you know, Merry Christmas, Season's Greetings, da 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 Somebody is definitely going to want to talk to you instead of saying, you know, that's my property and who the fuck are you to touch my shit? You know, say, oh, my God, you did not fucking do that, did you? Now they got you on some crazy wackadoo watch list. It's like, oh, well, you forget about getting any correspondence back and forth from anybody now. They're just going to send you out uh, computer-generated letters, and they're just really going to F with you. And I don't blame them, because, like I said, they got way too much shit to do. And they deal with crazy people, more like tax protesters. And they're like, oh, no, we're not dealing with this guy. We're done. Just just throw him under the bus. So, like I said, you know, before you just send letters out, just, you know, we'll just do a little bit at a time. At least you got a little bit of time before you're going to make a claim for it, you know. Are you still there? Yeah, yep. Okay, I don't know if I lost you. No, I, I was I was thinking, of, uh, like, all the way here listening to you, I was coming up with all kinds of ideas for uh, writing letters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah somebody, else, somebody else called me up today, and I said that to them. Oh, Rich called me up. And I said to him, I said, what, what's with you guys? I said, uh, I said, I mean, I remember, I said, when I was a kid, you know, somebody would tell me I got to uh, write a letter to my aunt or my grandma and tell them thank you for... Uh, a present or something like that, I'd say to my mom, like, well, why don't you just knock my teeth out of my head? It'd be less painful. I don't want to write a letter. And like I said, it's just, it's just, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's just something about sitting down and writing a freaking letter. I'd rather have somebody take one of the, one of the teeth, or say, mom, why don't you just take one of my teeth out of my head and just mail it to grandma, you know? Maybe that'll be thank you enough, you know what? Because honestly, you know, I, I don't want to write a letter. You know, I, I ain't got time for it. You know, I, I just don't feel like it. Letters are stupid. Why don't I just call up and tell her thank you? It's like, no, 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 you got to write a letter, you know. And that's why I tell people all the time my mom's got perfect credit rating. And the bank manager came out to just shake my mom's hand because he said he thought he'd never find a person with a perfect credit rating in their life. He said to my mom, you know, you must be rich. My mom's like, huh, I work for the IRS. I'll give her I make 20 grand a year. <laughs> you know, but she's like, I know how to write a letter to my creditors. And I know how to, if I'm going to be late, and now that I make partial payments. And then I know how to slowly catch up. Well, I hope when I get it, they get it. But until then, she's like she'd say she'd just write letters. And she was a hell of a letter writer. So like I said, I don't know if it's a, it's a guy thing. If guys just hate writing letters and women are better at it, I don't know. I don't know. I hate writing letters. I really do. 
You know, it's just like when I worked in a box and uh, the owner died and his wife took over. And uh, there was video games back then in the box. And uh, she told me to get a rag and clean the screens off. I said, what? She said, get a rag and clean the video screens off. I said, you're kidding me. She's like, she's like, what, what do you mean? Are you kidding me? I said, you're kidding me, right? I said, what, what do you think? I, I'm, I'm Alice the Maid? You know, I, I, you know, I fixed the machines here. And I bought that. So what makes you think I'm going to fucking wash the uh, window? What makes you think I'm going to clean a piece of glass? What makes you think I'm going to clean a video screen? I said, lady, look, if you tell me to take lift that machine up and put it on the other side of the bar or the bowling alley, I'll do it. I'll lift that thing up off the ground and drag it over there, but I'm not cleaning that screen. If you say, look, take two seconds and wipe the screen, or take three hours to move it on the other side of the building, I'm going to take three hours to move it on the other side of the building. I am not cleaning the screen. I ain't doing it. I'll quit. I ain't doing it. She's like, you're kidding me. I said, no, I shit you not. I will quit. So like I said, that's the same way I feel like a lot of these guys are calling me up on the show. I was talking to the guy a little while ago. Guy Rich was going to come down and help me. And I was like, you were here last week, and you still haven't wrote that letter? And he's like, uh, no. I said, look, you got contempt of court hearing next week, right? Yeah. I said, all you tell them is you just write a nice little letter and say, oh, geez, I was in matrimonial court. I'm sorry I was talking out of turn. I'm sorry I was using phrases that were not recognized by this court. I'm sorry I was talking you know, in terms of common parlance when I should have, you know, I don't know the specialized meanings in, you know, your terms of art. So please forgive me if any trespass or any delay or disturbance I caused to the court. I said, I told you this like a freaking week ago when you were down here. I said, you haven't broke the letter? He's like, no. So I said, obviously, I shouldn't waste my time looking at my email. You haven't sent me anything yet. He's like, no. He's like, well, I'll come down tomorrow and help you move stuff. And uh, can you help me, uh, you know, sometime tomorrow? I said, yeah. You know, when you get ready to go home, you know, go to dinner with me and, uh, at Dutchie's restaurant and I'll, uh, help you write something. I said, but this is ridiculous. I said, it's like a three-year-old. I said, tell you, write a letter, write a letter, write a letter. And you ain't writing your letter yet. You like, eat your peas. I'm like, ah, you're pushing them all over the fucking plate. Just eat the damn things. And he's still dicking around. I was like, what are you doing? Well, you know, I just wasn't sure what to write. I said, write any effing thing. Just pick up a paper and pen and start scribbling. Start doodling. I don't care what you got to do. Just send me something. I said, because if I drop dead and die, so I, you just can't find me no more. I just don't feel like doing this no more. You know, I'm, I'm not court ordered to do this stuff. If I don't feel like doing it no more, I ain't doing it no more. I mean, I didn't do it for what, three, four weeks? Did it break my heart? Nope. Did I say, oh my God. What's that? Let's broke everyone else's art. We all miss it. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's funny. It's like I say, oh, glory to be God, man. Uh, glory to God, whatever. You know, I'm back. Hey, you know, it's been a long three, four weeks, whatever. I'm so grateful to uh, be back doing the show. I'm like, yay. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm out here. Uh, you know where I'm at, next to the side of the fence. Here, uh, just pulling stuff off the side of the fence right now. Just sticking them in the containers to get ready to move them all. Move them all. So I'm not really concentrating on like what I'm saying. But uh, I do pretty good, you know. But uh, it doesn't take a lot to do this stuff because I say it so many times, the same stuff. Just write the freaking letter. Just pick up a pen and paper and start freaking writing. I don't see you sending me anything. And like I said, there's a, there's a lot of crazy shit I see coming out of Canada. You know, there's a guy named Chris and a guy named Mike. And uh, people are getting in trouble from the government or the crown or the courts because the letters that they're writing are way too effing violent. So uh, I'm using words like cease and desist. So I said, what in, what in holy hell possessed you to write the word cease and desist to like a government entity? Well, what possessed you to do that? He's like, well, I've seen you do I said, okay, when do I do it? When it's whose court, my court or their court? When I'm the plaintiff, when I'm the claimant, when I'm the mobbing, or when I'm the defendant, or when I'm the respondent, or when I'm the affiant? When do you use the cease and desist? He's like, oh, I thought you No, dude. You don't effing tell any man, and you certainly don't tell an agency, and you certainly don't tell somebody with a gun and a badge to stop doing something. You could say to them politely, do you realize what you're doing is causing me great harm? And I know you're a lovely man and, or a lovely woman who works for this lovely agency, and I know this lovely agency did not send you out there or to find your title or to find your role or make you a character to be one of that who causes harm to man or woman, and I know you wouldn't wish to do such an act, I believe you people might call it cease and desist. 
but I'm just asking you kindly, if you realize what you're doing, can you please, you know, refrain yourself from doing it any further? Thank you. I'd really appreciate it, and God bless you. I said, is there some effing, effing reason because your Canadians are so sweet and nice? Everybody knows you around the world. I said, you're very nice, sweet people. Is there any reason why you got to act like a lawyer and be a shithead and talk, talk violently? All of a sudden, you forget how to be Canadian. All of a sudden, you forget how to be nice, and you start talking like a freaking lawyer. I'm like, what? Does it impress you to be a lawyer? Does it impress you to be a tough guy? You know, the world ain't impressed by a tough Canadian. You know, it's just, just be nice. Just be sweet. Just be pleasant. Just be freaking happy. I mean, like a New Yorker, we're just known to being grumpy and, you know, miserable, arrogant, whatever. And Canadians are known to be sweet people. So is there some reason why you lose a hell of a quality when it comes to working with the government? When it would work in your great benefit, you people are beyond, be beyond nice. And I don't mean being a fool. I mean just to be sweet and like that letter that you wrote to them. It was fucking typical Canadian. You know, season's greetings. Happy holidays to you and yours. Yay. Show me a freaking Canadian. Yeah, you know, that's that I got. Yeah, yeah, but when, when I told you, you know, I said, why don't you draw a picture of Santa Claus on there and maybe a snowman or a couple of elves dancing around? You thought I was kidding. You're like, oh, you're being sarcastic now. I was like, no, I'm not. Walk up, walk your strong point. Your strong point is you're freaking nice. You're friendly. You're ple- pleasant. You know, you got a, a good temperament. You know, it, it, work it up. Don't, 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 you know, use one of your strong, you know, one of your strengths. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, because like I said, when, when, when you go, if you have to go in front of a jury, like say somebody like John Paul, I kept telling him, I said, you're not going to succeed at this. He's like, why not? You, I said, you have no empathy. I said, you're from Boston, which is almost as bad as being from New York City. It's almost as bad. I said, you, you've got no empathy. You don't feel how the other side is moving the court. You have no idea why they're moving and how they're moving it. You don't have a clue and you don't freaking care. I said, it's all about you. I said, it's all about what you want and all about what you require them to do. I said, you're not going to get anywhere because it's their court. You're not going to get anywhere with this. You're going to fail miserably. I said, because you can't see it from their point of view. I said, you only have an agenda that you're going to win and you're going to do it your way. I said, you got to, you got to find a happy ground, a happy middle. And I said, you're not going to find it. I said, you're just in for, you're in for the kill, in for the win. I said, you're suing this guy, suing this guy, suing this guy, suing this guy. I said, why don't you just work on the basics? You know, the plaintiff, where's the United States of America? I got my checkbook here. Why don't you just keep saying, I got my checkbook. I'm just waiting for the United States of America to sign a piece of paper saying as I'm a child. Let Barack Obama sign it. I don't care. Who's ever in charge of this United States of America? Just tell him, look, I got a check. I got tons of cash ready to pay. I'm sorry if I did any trespass or anything wrong. I just need the United States of America to come forward and tell me how much trail. And all you got to keep saying is that over and over like a broken record. Keep saying that to the jury like a broken record. I'm sorry for any trespass. I'm sorry if I uh, filled out some paperwork wrong. I'm sorry if I didn't cross the I's and dot O's. I, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, you know. I'm not a tax expert. I, I guess I thought I was. I guess I really effed up. I guess to be a man is that, you know, is human to error, I guess. Oh, well, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, if the United States of America says, you know, I've done wrong and I've harmed the United States of America and, and we lost the war in Japan or South Korea or Vietnam because I don't pay my taxes in the right manner. I paid too much, too little, you know, and it's all my fault why the economy collapsed. So uh, I'm almost sorry, but uh, just tell me how much I owe. And I've just always been waiting to see the actual damages. Because like I tell people all the time on these shows, there's a couple of elements of a case or a claim. There's got to be the wrong and there's got to be actual damages. Now, do I actually see? Do I actually see and that I've done anything wrong? Well, you're saying I violated some sort of code. Okay, lovely. Let's go for that. Well, I'll give you that. I'll, I'll, I'll spot you that. Not a problem. Now, where's the damages? Just say for shits and giggles, I'll give you the code. I'll say the code is, is wonderful common law and every common man knows that. Okay, I'll give you that. Great. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, but I'll spot you that. Now, show me the damages. Well, there are no damages. What do you mean there are no damages? You mean there's no, you know, you, you can't assess the damages? You're just saying something bad happened, but you don't know what, or you or you don't know what, you know, what was the cause of the wrong? And, and, and then you can start saying, so you're going to move this to a, a court, Bob? You know, then you start using their names. So, you know, it's like, look, I'm going to have to open up my own court. 
and I'm not going to ask you, Bob, because you're saying that I've done something wrong, yet you have no proof of any damages. So just because I did something wrong, where's the damages? So I say, well, there are no damages. Well, if there's no damages, then what does it care if a bear, a bear farts in the woods? Who cares? What did the bear do? Well, he released CO2. Okay, can you prove it? Well, we have witnesses to there to verify that the bear fucking farted in the woods. Oh, so kill the bear, huh? Was he letting out the CO2? Is that what it is? Yeah, well, too bad for the bear. Well, that's just fucking, that's just insane. It's ungodly. There's no damages. He didn't harm anybody. There's no physical loss to anything on God's earth, great or small. So like I said, you know, once I start, I'm just trying to get people to understand the simple basic stuff. Just make them call out, where's the damages? Just make them own up to it. Say, where's the damages? Because I'm ready to own up to it. I'm ready to pay for any damn thing I've done wrong. And just keep saying that like a broken record. Put it in writing. And that's what I kept telling John. I said, you go in front of a jury, just keep saying to them like a broken record. Uh, you know, I'm just waiting for any man or woman to pop up and... No matter what question they ask you, just keep answering it in that manner. They say, what's your name? It's like, I'm looking for the man or woman who claims I've you know, done something wrong. But I, I just, I, I got the check. I got my checkbook. I just want to pay and get this out of it and get done. I don't know why we're wasting this jury's valuable time that they could spend with their wife and kids. I don't know why they're here doing this when I've been willing to pay you people for the last 5, 10, 20 years. Everything I owe. I'm just waiting for somebody to give me the damn bill. The judge will just say, answer the question. It's like, I did answer the question. He asked me, what, what's my name? That's my answer. He said to me, did you fill out this piece of paper back in 1997? I answered him. I said, I'm just waiting for somebody to give me the damn bill and tell me how much I owe. That's my answer. You want to ask me some more questions? And they'll stop asking you questions. They'll say, we're getting nowhere with this witness, sir. I say, okay, then I guess uh, you don't want me to step down? I guess you're, you're done questioning me? Good. Now it's time my time to question the plaintiff, right? The plaintiff must appear so I can cross-examine my accuser. All right, good. Habeas corpus hasn't been suspended in this nation, has it? No, good. And I'm moving my court now. Where's the plaintiff? Where's the United States of America? Where's the man and woman who's claiming I've done something wrong? I owe you a debt and the responsibility to my fellow man. I don't owe anything to something called the United States of America. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's the same thing. <clears throat> like I said, thank God in my lifetime, the Soviet Union collapsed. And the Soviet prosecutors, the day before they collapsed, were still fucking running on their mouth. Well, you owe a duty to the greater... Uh, Soviet Union, the people of the great Soviet Union, da, 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 da. You, you owe a responsibility and a debt to them. And you must pay. You must pay dearly. And we're going to stick you in jail for 20 years for, you know, doing what you did to the great Soviet Union. And it's like, uh, wait a second, it's uh, 1202. I think the Soviet Union closed down for business at 12 o'clock. I think you better go do something else, prosecutor. I think you better go find something else to do. Because your great Soviet Union, um, they went out of business about two minutes ago. It's like, oh, they did? Yeah, they did. So, now, why did you bring me into this fucking courtroom, George, or, you know, Boris? Why did you bring me here? What was the purpose of this? What did I do again? Well, you did it to the Soviet Union. Where's the Soviet Union? Well, it, it, it doesn't uh, no longer exist. Uh, did it ever exist? Except for in the minds of man. That you guys believed it existed. Well, uh, you know, it's on paper, and that was good enough for us. Oh, really? So you believe everything you read? Well, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> really? It's just like I said to you the other day. I could say, I I don't believe in space aliens. And then the next week I'm going to come on a show and say, well, I do believe in space aliens. Why? Well, one landed on my uh, front porch. And I was talking for about three hours. He was a cool little guy. Now I believe in him. And then somebody's going to say, oh, Carl, uh, you fell off your porch the other day and we found you unconscious. I said, oh, okay, then I don't believe in space aliens again. You know, so it's it's ridiculous to say, well, are you are you basing this on a belief? Are you believing there's something called the United States of America? Where does it exist other than paper? Show me. Where does the Soviet Union exist other than on paper? Show me. Because when the great Soviet Union disappeared, are you telling me the biggest nation on planet Earth that takes up 10 time zones with a freaking million or billion people on there, are you telling me they just disappeared? No, the nation didn't disappear. The nation is the people. Some stupid name that they called the political beliefs, the political philosophy. Uh, you know, it's like saying the great democracy of the United States of America. So what? We're the great Democrats. The Soviets is just a, it's like a political party. I'm like, yeah, so what? Well, the great Republicans of the United States, you know, we, you know, you, you cause great harm to the, to the great, you know, democratic state known as the United States of the great 
uh, Republican state known as the United States of America. Yeah, and show me. Show me the actual damages. Show me. How did I damage the United States? Did, they, did their constitution go away? Did their agencies uh, get disrupted? Was any of their members of Congress or Parliament interfered with? Did somebody in Congress or Parliament not go home with a nice fat paycheck? He goes on and pays something? What? And like I said, it's funny. It, 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 out of all like the civilized countries, is they were saying like the United States is like the only country that puts people in jail for not paying it, uh, not paying it uh, like taxes, like paying on a debt. Like Russia didn't put people in jail for that. China doesn't put people in jail for that. You know, France don't. It, it's pretty funny that like we're the only nation that does that. We put our own people in jail because of a debt. It's like oh, this, it, that makes sense. Let's pay a hundred thousand dollars a year for prison guards and everybody else to support this guy. If he's got cancer, well. You got to give him cancer treatment. You know that that makes a lot of sense. That's how she can clothe this freaking guy because he owes a debt to society. So you know, let's put him in jail so he creates even a bigger debt to society. How's he paying society off by taking another hundred thousand dollars a year from us so we can support him, house him, clothe him, feed him, help give him health benefits? It makes no sense.